think young women sports writers in the 1990s are going to even face more difficulties on this issue than you did years back, decades back? Oh, yes. I, I think that, that uh, the position of young women sports writers today is far more difficult than mine was. And that, that's for several reasons. Uh, one is, uh, I think that, the, that there's much more opposition to women sports writers. There's so many more women sports writers that, that uh, all of a sudden people begin to realize, hey, women sports writers are here to stay. Uh, when I came in, I was the only one. And people sort of accommodated themselves to me, and I accommodated, I accommodated myself to them. But it's much more difficult. And I think one of the problems with, with the young women sports writers today is that you never really know what the rules are. I knew what the rules were. Uh, when I went to a uh, game, I knew I couldn't go into the dressing room. There wasn't any question about it. I remember a friend of mine who <coughs> covered the New York Islanders for the New York Daily News, and she said the difficulty was so that you never knew one game you'd go and everything was okay, you could go into the dressing room, there was no problem. The next day you'd go and they'd say, no, you can't go in. And it made it extremely difficult because you couldn't plan ahead. I knew when I went to cover a game that I couldn't go into the dressing room. So I made arrangements, I, I was all set up, I was all prepared to take care of the situation. But it must be extremely difficult to go to three games and, and not have any problems at all of, of access, and then all of a sudden be told no. And one of the big problems that young women face today is, for some reason, which I do not understand, the male sports writers blame the women for all the problems. When uh, a school closes the locker room to keep from admitting women, instead of saying, hey, these people are trying to keep me from doing my job, they say, well, it's all Diane's fault because she wanted to go into the dressing room. It's not Diane's fault. It's not Lisa's fault. It's not my fault. All we're doing is trying to do our job. And uh, I can't understand why the men don't realize this and why aren't they, they aren't as willing to uh, fight for our rights as they are for their own rights. But that isn't the way it works. And they don't seem to realize that if I lose my rights, then they're going to lose theirs too. You think there's a way that you, they can remedy this situation so there's truly equal access? I see no reason why women can't go into the dressing room. You know, somebody went to a great deal of trouble to invent, invent two things. One is a towel and the other is a bathrobe. <laughs> and all you got to do is take the towel and put it around your waist or take the bathrobe and put it on. There's no law that says you have to walk around without any clothes on. Uh, <clears throat> just last year, when, when Big House Games was going for his 800th win, over at the Coliseum, and even though I was retired and I was no longer covering games, uh, I wanted to be there because I knew Big House, and I, I wanted to be there when he won his 800th game. Well, he lost, and I wanted to tell him that, okay, we'll try again. And I had been told that under our new Coliseum, there was an interview room apart from the uh, actual uh, locker room. So I went in to the Winston-Salem State locker room, and found out that that isn't quite true, that, that uh, even though they are separate, there's, no, uh, there's nothing between them. So I started to leave because there was no reason really for me to be there. And Buddy Taylor, who was the trainer at Winston-Salem State, said, wait just a minute. And he spoke to the boys, and uh, they put towels around themselves, went on, got the, went, into the, went in to take the shower, and it was no problem. It was no problem because they were considerate and they were gentlemen. And I don't see, I just don't see why it can't be done.